Hi, this is Stan Lyle with Master Math. During the lesson, you're going to come to some You Try It slides where you're asked to do problems that relate to the lesson. Hit your pause button, try the problem, and then hit the forward key to move on to the answer. I hope you have a really good time today. Well, today we're going to talk about writing and graphing equations and inequalities. And before this lesson's over, I hope you understand what an inequality is, what a compound inequality is, what a solution to an equation or a inequality is, and I hope you understand how to read a number line like this. I know I said this before, but the only value of math is when it's used to model the real world and use mathematical tools to understand the real world better. And we can model the real world using mathematical symbols to describe equations and inequalities. Let's review those symbols. Let's say I had a variable x. It's a number. It's just an unknown number. We don't know what x is, but it's a number. And let's say I also had a constant number, 16. It's a constant number because 16 is always 16. It doesn't vary. It's not a variable number. It's a constant number. Now you understand there's various relationships that might exist between x and 16. x might be equal to 16. And we'd write that this way. x equals 16. But it's also possible that x doesn't equal 16. x might be 17, x might be 18, x might be any number that's not 16. And we'd write it this way, x does not equal 16. Now you'll see all we've done is take an equal symbol and put a little slash mark through it, which means is not 16. Well, what if x were bigger than 16? What if x were always bigger than 16? It could be 17, 18, 19, 20, but it's always bigger than 16. How would we write that? Well, we'd write it this way. X is bigger or is greater than 16. And if you have trouble remembering what this symbol means, remember this. The larger open end of the symbol is closer to the bigger number. This end of the symbol is bigger and larger and open, and it's closest to the bigger number. X is bigger than 16. The opposite of that is also true. The smaller end of the symbol is towards the smaller number. Well, x could also be less than 16. And we'd write that this way. We'd just turn that larger than symbol around so that the larger end was towards 16, and that would say that 16 were larger than x, or x was smaller than 16. Well, what about the situation where x is at least 16. It's 16 or more. It's 16, 17, 18, but it includes 16. How would we write that? Yeah, we'd write it this way. x is larger than or equal to 16. And you can see all we did was take that larger than symbol and put half an equal sign under it. x is larger than or equal to 16. Well, x could also be less than or equal to 16. x could be no greater than 16. And we'd write it this way. x is less than or equal to 16. That would include 16, 15, 14 and a half, minus 20. Any number that's at least, uh, that is no greater than 16. Let's try to use this symbols for inequality to describe a couple of situations. Let's say the first situation is you have to be exactly 16 years old to take driving lessons. Well, let's look at it this way. You have to be exactly 16 years old to take driving lessons. We're going to call D the age you need to be to take driving lessons. How would we write that with inequality symbols? Well, let's think about it. D has to be exactly 16 for you to take the driving lesson. So D equals 16.
the age you need to be to take driving lessons is exactly 16. Well, what about this situation? You have to be older than 16 years to take driving lessons. D has to be greater than 16. How would we write that? Well, D is greater than 16. The open end of the symbol is towards D, which means that D is greater than the other number, 16. Well, how about this one? You have to be at least 16 years old to take driving lessons. In other words, when you're 16, you can take driving lessons. When you're 16 and a half, you can also take driving lessons. You have to be at least 16 years old to take driving lessons. That means that D is greater than or equal to 16. Well, now let's talk about graphing and solving some equations and inequalities. And we'll start with an easy one. X equals minus 4. That is the solution. If we've got X equals something, we've solved for X. X equals something. And in this case, X equals minus 4. And if we needed to graph that on a number line, it'd be very easy. We just put a dot at minus 4. And that would mean that X equals minus 4. Well, how about this one? X is greater than minus 4. X is any number that's larger than minus 4. 100 is larger than minus 4, so that would be part of our solution set. 10 is larger than minus 4, so that would be part of our solution set. But all the numbers to the left of minus 4, minus 10, minus 20, all those numbers are smaller than minus 4. And we'd graph that on a number line just like that. We put a circle over minus 4, and it would be an open circle because we don't want to include minus 4 in our solution. Minus 4 is not larger than minus 4. So I don't want to paint orange over that minus 4 spot. I want to leave it open. And that indicates that all the numbers to the right of minus 4 are in the solution set. And that arrow pointing to the right means it goes on forever. It goes on to positive 2 billion. But it doesn't include minus 4. And so I've, I've not painted over minus 4. Minus 4 is open. X is larger than minus 4. Well, how about this one? X is less than minus 4. Well, the solution is just like the previous one. We put a circle over the minus 4. We don't paint over the minus 4 because minus 4 is not less than minus 4. But we draw an arrow to the left indicating that every number that's to the left of that minus 4 number is a solution to x is less than minus 4. What if our um, expression was x is greater than or equal to minus 4. Well, we'd have to graph that differently than we graphed x is greater than minus 4, and we do. We paint in the circle. It's, it's a closed circle over minus 4. And that means that minus 4 is painted over. It's part of the solution. Minus 4 is greater than or equal to minus 4. And every number to the right of that is a solution to this equation because every number to the right of minus 4 is larger than minus 4. And we've got an arrow at the end of the line indicating that it goes forever. Well, guess what this is going to look like? X is less than or equal to minus 4. We're going to have a closed circle over minus 4 and we're going to run an arrow to the left towards the smaller numbers. And that means x is less than or equal to minus 4. Well, now let's talk about compound inequalities. And we'll use a real world situation to help us understand what a compound inequality is. The Big Sisters Club has teenage members who must be younger than 17. It also has adult members who serve as mentors. They have to be at least 21 years old. 
use inequality symbols to describe the membership. And we'll call the membership M. And that membership includes both the teenagers and the adult mentors. So we've got to describe two different groups that compose the membership. And you can see there's two different inequalities shown here. The first is that the members have to be younger than 17. That's M is less than 17. It's not M is less than or equal to 17 because if they were 17, they wouldn't be less than 17 and it's asking and it's saying that the members have to be younger than 17. So it's M is less than 17. We could also write that this way. 17 is larger than M. There's another class of member. Those are the adults, and they have to be at least 21 years old. At least 21 years old, that includes 21. 21 is at least 21. 22 is greater than. Uh, so it would be any number 21 or larger. And you write that this way. The membership is larger than or equal to the age of 21. Well, we've got two inequalities now to describe our membership. We've got M is less than 17 and M is greater than or equal to 21. But we could simplify that if we just combine these two inequalities and we said that M is between 17 and 21, or more specifically, M is less than 17 or greater than or equal to 21. And we call that a compound inequality. Now, how would we graph this solution? Well, we create a number line and we graph each of those inequalities separately. Let's first graph M is less than 17, or 17 is greater than M. It doesn't include M, so we're going to put an open circle on there. We're not going to paint over that 17. We're going to leave it open. It doesn't include 17. And then we're going to draw an arrow to the left because it includes every number that's to the left of 17. The second inequality listed is M is greater than or equal to 21. So we'll put a closed circle over 21 because 21 is included. We've painted over 21. It's part of our line. And we've drawn an arrow to the right so that every number to the right is included in our solution. And that's called a compound inequality. Now you try this one. Hit the pause button, do the problem, and then hit the forward key to move on to the answer. The sum of x and 5 is no more than 8. Write and graph an inequality that describes the situation. Well, that sounds a little confusing to me, but I'm, I'm going to try to make it easier. I'm going to circle the numbers. I'm going to circle x, 5, and 8. x is a variable number. 5 and 8 are constant numbers. And I know that in all likelihood, all three of those are going to be in my answer. So I'm going to write them down. x, 5, and 8. Now I just got to figure out how to combine them. And there's going to be clues on how to combine them in the word problem. Let's read it. The sum of x and 5. The sum, the sum, that sounds important. I'm going to underline sum. What's that mean? The sum of x and 5. Well, it means I'm going to add x and 5. Well, let's do that. Let's put a plus sign between x and 5. x plus 5. All right, the sum of x and 5 is no more than 8. Is no, is, that sounds important too. I'm going to underline no more than. No more than 8. What's that mean? No more than 8. Well, 8 is not more than 8, so 8 would be no more than 8. 7 is no more than 8, so that would qualify. But 9 is more than 8. So any number that is equal to 8 or less than 8 would be no more than 8. So I want to have a symbol that says less than or equal to 8. And I have that symbol. I got a symbol less than or equal to 8. And I can remember this symbol because the smaller end of the symbol is towards the smaller expression that, that is, uh, uh, has to be less than 8 or equal to 8. All right, so I've written an expression. x plus 5 is less than or equal 
to 8. Now, how do I graph that? Well, first I need a number line. And then, all I got to do is describe what x and 5 might be. x and 5 has to be less than or equal to 8. Well, it's less than or equal to, so it would include 8, and I'd want to fill in the dot over the 8. I'd want to color it in, and then I'd want to run an arrow to the left towards the less than numbers. And that's the graph of the sum of x and 5 is no more than 8. You try this one. Hit your pause button, try the problem, and then hit your forward key to go on to my answer. Write an inequality that describes the prices at Harry's hats. Well, up in the corner there, Harry's advertising that his hats are n never more expensive than $10. No hat more than $10. Now, I can write an inequality, but first I've got to figure out, is 10 included in my solution? Is 10 no more than 10? Yeah, 10 is not more than 10. 11 is more than 10. 9 is less than 10. And 10 is no more than 10. It's equal to 10. So, I'm going to call the prices at Harry's Hats H. And I've got to say that H is less than 10 or equal to 10. And I got a symbol to handle that. Less than or equal to. H is less than or equal to 10. That's our lesson on writing and solving inequalities and equations, and also graphing the solutions to inequalities. Now it's time to test your skills with worksheets and quizzes at www.mastermath.info. I hope you enjoyed yourself, I hope you learned a lot, and I hope I see you again real soon.